Hello. Hello. This is Ted. And uh, I'm here with Vanessa Russells and Tracy Hudson. And we've been having a wonderful time. And we're talking about restoration and hope mm -hmm. and about what really matters. So, um, Vanessa, why don't you introduce yourself? And then we'll take it from here. And we're just going to have a natural conversation. And uh, hopefully you're going to enjoy joining in this conversation with us. Yeah. Thank you so much. First of all, Ted, you've been such a, an amazing advocate and supporter of Love Never Fails, you and your wife and your family. And I can't thank you enough for that. Um, and it's so good to meet you, Tracy. We've been talking about meeting and likewise. I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Um, as you know, we were chatting a little bit before we started the recording. I started Love Never Fails 10 years ago after one of my 15 year old dance students was um, unfortunately assaulted uh, in the Bay Area and sold throughout California for a year. And, um, and you know, it was really traumatic and gut-wrenching and uh, propelling to start an organization uh, at a time where I really was, I felt very ill-equipped to do that. I was uh, working in the high-tech industry in a senior role and um, was loving my technology, loving my two kids, single mom, and just really didn't have uh, the skills I thought to do what needed to be done to serve somebody who had been traumatized in that way. Um, but of course, God always has other plans and he always equips us, right? For what he's putting in our hand to, to do. So I was super grateful um, for the opportunity to um, just, find her, locate her, love on her, help her to get to uh, a place of safety. And, um, and then from there, it, you know, once I started Love Never Fails, it just, just was like a snowball effect. I, you know, I started to do street outreach, started talking to people in the streets. And then I learned people would say, hey, if you had a house, I'd come off the streets. I'd actually join you. And I'm like, okay, then we've got to have a house. So then we opened houses. And then once we got houses, people were, started graduating and they're like, you know, I really want to stay out of the life, but I don't have a sustainable skill set. I don't have, I don't have financial freedom. Like, ah, oh, we better open up an IT academy. So that's when we started tech, you know, IT Tech Academy, which is, you know, a, a state certified cybersecurity pre-apprenticeship program. And then you know, and it's just kind of had this kind of ripple effect where we've just been doing things with one person in mind and everything that they need. We're about barrier removal. And our, you know, our belief is that every single person that we serve is so very loved, so very worth it. And anything we can do to remove barriers from their life, um, then we're committed to doing that. I mean, I impressed is not even the right word. I'm mm -hmm. so just in awe of you and listening to your inner truth and, and knowing that sometimes life does throw us these curveballs, these unexpected moments where you either take it by the reins or you look back and think, wow, I could have really made an impact on someone's life. But it sounds so love never fails has been up and running then for over 10 years. Is that yes, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I'm amazed and, and just super humbled to be able to say that I worked for eight of those 10 years at Cisco Systems in a global senior sales leader role, and they were very supportive of me doing that. But I eventually, I say I graduated from Cisco. So in 2019, I decided to do this full time. So I stepped away. And um, although I couldn't go too far, so I became this tech academy, which has kind of kept me in the tech industry, <laughs> but now I'm the bridge, right? To bridge yeah. the survivors that I'm educating and training to get jobs in the tech world. Do you have that, that relationship still with Cisco where you're able to place people actually? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Wow. With the so, skill set, the whole yes. thing. Yes. It's really remarkable. So last year we graduated 68 students from our IT Academy. Um, and six, let's see, 57% of our students are women. 68% mm -hmm. are Black and Latino, 47% are survivors of gender-based violence. So human trafficking or domestic violence. And um, just that's a big deal because those three stats that I just gave are unheard of in the IT mm -hmm. world, 
unheard of. I think yeah. the, the last stat I heard from labor uh, labor organization was uh, 3%. So 25% of all IT is women. 3% are black, 2% are Latino. So yeah. it's very low. So you, when you, when you, when you right. have that kind of a class that graduates after 35 weeks of just, you know, plucking away at it, and now they're getting placed at, um, one of them just um, got a position at a company called Omitsa. Uh, one of them works in their, in sales. Uh, another one uh, works in, um, works for Cisco as in their, in their lab, their learning labs. Um, and we have one, a couple of them went to work for Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, yeah. And so, okay. So, I guess we'll stay on the subject of the school that your tech school. So 35 weeks of training. So if they have a high school diploma or not, you can. Bring yeah. Them so, in. yeah, we work with Oakland adult and career education and they actually okay. get them high school equivalency. So when they join our class, they're co-enrolled in their class so that they don't, no one has to miss out on anything. They can, everybody okay. can get this you know, pursue their goals simultaneously. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really, a really incredible. What what I love about this program is, you know, you, you have lots of open doors with Cisco and other high tech um, mm -hmm. companies, but they're not just doing it because they're phil philanthropic. No. They're also meeting a huge need, like mm -hmm. tech equipped uh, uh, tech employees are high, are hardly needed. And They've been looking more and more to overseas, but in one visas are very expensive process. Mm -hmm. and now we have right underneath our noses. It's like, we need to look at the problem differently. The people aren't part of the problem. They're part of the solution. That's and right. We can shift that. And now you're training them and now they're coming after you and saying, whoa, we love what she's doing. I mean, whose heart can't be broken when we hear these stories. Mm. Yeah, but you're not just touching their philanthropic arm. You're also saying, listen, you need these employees and I have a talent. story. There's a lot of them yeah. and I can provide you talent. And like one of the myths we've got to break is, well, maybe it's different, but particularly with the re-entry population mm -hmm. is this myth that they don't make good employees. And right. so they, they, mm -hmm. get, they get branded with, you know, this red scarlet letter felon and mm -hmm. it follows them the rest of their lives. And it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Of course, they can't make good employees if they're branded that way. Yeah. But you're, you're, you're showing a different model. Say, no, these people can make really, really good employees. Absolutely. Yeah. There's actually an article that was posted today in Psychology Today that um, where they interviewed me, Mitzi Purdue interviewed me about um, this very thing and how survivors of human trafficking can play an integral role in combating in, uh, in the cybersecurity combat, uh, specifically what we're seeing today with Ukraine and Russia. Um, there's these gaps in, the, in, in talent across all of these high-tech companies where they need to, um, they need to uh, I, you know, monitor situations, they need to uncover exploits, they need to come up with strategies to mitigate um, security holes in their, in, in their, in their company, you know, uh, strategy and um, company uh, security strategy. And, and uh, who better, and this is my position in this article, who better than to, to, to take a stance than people who know what it feels like to be unsafe. Yeah. People who know what it feels like to look over their shoulders, people who know what it feels like to be hyper vigilant, and people who are not worried about first world issues, who aren't saying, I haven't had my cup of coffee, my second or third cup of coffee today. People are willing to work without food in their bellies and with, you know, without lots of sleep. These are the resilient, brilliant type of people that are coming uh, saying, look at me, consider me. I've got the toughness, the mental toughness to endure some of these challenging situations. And I'm not saying they don't need to be trained. I am not saying that they have to be trained. They have to be supported um, to get onboarded. But I think there is something in a person that's been traumatized in this way that we may be overlooking. Uh, or like you said, have stereotyped away, right? Mm -hmm. Have uh, so it's it's an exciting time, and there's a lot of opportunity for people. And by the way, the other thing is, there's a, just a like a drive 
to pursue justice for the, mm-hmm. the you know, the, the people that I'm, the survivors that I see, they want people to be treated well, despite mm-hmm. the pain they've uncovered. And maybe because of it, they want people, others, they don't want people harmed. And I love that about the survivors that I'm working with. I think that's so important. I love that perspective of that yeah. life experience. It did give them that resilience and that insight and empathy. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it goes back to being street smart. There's a lot yeah. of things you can't teach someone right. about being, you know, quick witted or think about the other side or just the way that they strategize against life is just through those life experiences, I truly mm-hmm. believe, yeah. you know, and have that along with the education. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think we have an opportunity to um, really open some doors. I actually have been talking with um, a couple of companies uh, Sec Reliant and um, Pima College and just some of these um, uh, Merit College, um, some of these colleges that are really focused on cybersecurity and um, they are coming up with some like hacking ranges and just p- wonderful. Uh, so I'm an adjunct pr- professor for Merit College. I think I told you that, Ted. And um, so when people are enrolled in our IT classes, they're co-enrolled in college classes. And I did that. It was Merit's idea to pursue me to do that because they're like, I like the students that you're working with and we want more of them in our cyber program. And so will you join us as an adjunct professor? And I thank them for inviting me to do that because now our students get college credit for being in a class they were already going to be in. And, um, but anyway, they have a cybersecurity certificate program, so they can just slate right in after they take my class, which is introductory, they just move right into their cyber program. And then Pima College um, has a relationship with this, uh, like a hacking range in Arizona, and they're talking about possibly flying us out. Well, I don't know if they're talking about flying us out, but uh, inviting us out. So that we can participate oh, in their, fly them their out, first class. Yeah, fly us out, Pima. <laughs> I'm already enlisting them. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. I said you could come visit. I didn't say I was going to fly you. <laughs> so we got some plans because, you know, you do have to equip that, you know, this, like there's these inherent qualities, but they need to be trained. And so I want them to be trained by the best. And, um, Right. Because these are new careers. This isn't yeah. something that, you know, this is a new like, uncharted territory. These mm-hmm. courses and certifications and this need yes. for staffing and this, you know, niche. This exactly. Is right. Exactly. Story. And a lot of it is, you know, you can't even really like, like some of it. So they're getting certs, like they're, they're getting some Cisco certifications and um, cyber essentials and, you know, intro to cyber. And, um, and we're, we're in this great partnership with Cisco to get them certified. We also have some offerings on the Google HP AWS side, but I want them to also get that hands-on experience, like actually creating some ethical hacking strategies. And so that's where some of these these places that are offering up their, their ranges is so critical. So anyway, it's fun. It's, it's, it's just exciting to see people who like, I think about one of our survivors, her name is Tish and she lets me share her story publicly. And she, she started out with us in our houses. um, And uh, she, she came with her baby. Her baby was, I think two years old. I want to say he's like seven now. And um, he was, he's on the spectrum and she was trafficked for eight years and he was held as hostage um, until she met her daily quota. And she came into our house um, from Central Valley and one of our sister agencies referred her to us. She came in the home. She stayed with us for two years, just regaining her person, just regaining who she was, just learning who that I'm like a person, I'm a mom, I'm okay, I'm safe. And then finally she started working in a, we have a community engagement center in Hayward. She started working there and we we provide clothing to the community that are, you know, anyone who's in the community that's in need. 
And she was in the back room. She was sorting all the clothes and folding all the clothes by color and stuff. And I said, <laughs> you're supposed to be outside working with the customers. And she says, I don't like people. And I said, you know, she had everything color coded, Tracy, like mm -hmm. pinks with pinks, sure. and blacks with black. I said, <laughs> I think you're an engineer. And yeah. My engineering friend, they always laugh at me when I said, I said, I think you, you don't want to be in front. You want to be back here color coding. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, uh, maybe. And I said, why don't you come into my IT academy? And so she did graduated valedictorian uh, now works at Cisco in their labs, learning labs. Mm -hmm. And love it's it. just blossomed, goes on vacation, but just for has her own place. Yeah. Right. But you saw through it. You're like, we all have strengths and weaknesses. We can't all be great at everything. And yeah. And it goes back to not fitting in a box or a yeah. particular role that we think we might be, you know, that we're supposed to fit in, I guess. Exactly. So I love that you just said, look, we're going to find the right thing for you. For you. There yeah. can be another avenue there for you. That exactly. is. Awesome. Yes. It was so awesome. And then you watch her and you're just like, and you see her little baby. And he's now talking and he's doing so well. He's just excelling. And man, I just, I'm done. Able, yeah, you're like, I'm finished. I'm over. <laughs> Drop my, did you, were you able to help her son with early intervention and all of that? Oh, yeah. Well, we got, wow. we got him connected to um, a regional center that did, that works with kids with special needs and mm -hmm. he got speech therapy. He, you know, they, they got counseling, they got all these services, they got mentors. They have two ladies that are like mentors to mom who help her support her with her. She, she just so, has, this, and, it, and what's so beautiful is it's like, it's not, I mean, love never fails was part of it, but it was so, but it was a community response, but all we had to be was like the beginning of mm -hmm. the process that said, you know, I see you, Yeah. you know, I see you, I value you. Yeah. I, I believe in you. And yeah. she just, she, she, she took it and ran. She yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, I know this is just so moving. Yeah. It's just yeah. The, the theme I see coming out of here is that this begins with a human connection. Mm. And That's being right. not a like like I had this experience. Like, you know, we go up and I play basketball in prison. Oh, here, look at this. Ear hustle. This is the oh, yeah, let me see. podcast. Oh uh, nice. I love yeah. that. I need one of those. <laughs> Uh, buy, oh, you support their podcast by buying their merch at Ear Hustle. It's on okay. I bought this. Yeah, yeah, this nice. They're really nice. So if you, they're, they're, they're not just cool. Look at, that's the coolest logo. It um, is. They're also really nice, comfy. Um, yeah, it's a great shirt. And, you know, great, great. Uh, and the podcast is amazing. It's award-winning. It's really moving. It's about just a day in the life of San Quentin. Um, but mm. enough of the plug for Ear Hustle, but we love you guys. Keep up the good work hey. at Ear Hustle. <laughs> but, you know, going up and playing basketball with the inmates, you know, we just immediately connect. And it takes mm. about, for your first visit, it takes about 30 seconds before you're not in a prison. You're just with buddies. With you your buddies. Basketball. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I tell people it's the most, it's the most rewarding place I've ever played. Mm -hmm. Like it's fun. It was funner than playing against the NBA players. You know, I didn't play in the NBA. I played against them, you know, pick up and stuff or playing in Europe professionally. It's, it's so fun. It's so rewarding. And what happens beginning out of that human connection? Yeah. Like right. I was, I was, you know, with, you know, and there's this tendency, like, like particularly with homeless, we want to just look away, you know, because mm -hmm. they're asking us for something. We feel awkward and, um, I never carry cash just because we live in a cashless society. So I don't have to worry. I'm honest when I say I don't have any money. Mm -hmm. But I was in San Francisco. I just had lunch with a friend and this weird homeless lady and an even very weirder guy there. She's asking for money. But instead of turning away, I decided to look at her and I see, you know, I don't have any money. And then I remembered I had half the sandwich. And I'm like, hey, I. You know, I was really looking forward to eating this tasty sandwich I just had, but you want it? She goes, you bet. So I went and gave it to her. Mm -hmm. Then I, you know, I felt bold. So I said, how can I pray for you right now? What, what do you need? What blessing? I'm going to talk to God and ask him for a miracle or whatever you need. Mm -hmm. She looked me in the eye and says, I already have it. Mm -hmm. What you just gave me 
I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. I didn't really. She says, no, this right now. It hit me like the the just the fact that I looked at her and talked at her like a human being Aww, come on. touched her. Like I always remember that. It's like, yeah. and look at what's happened. Like you you didn't you could have looked away or you could have just taken an easy way out you know helped your one friend and then looked away but you chose to look in and yeah. now look you're opening up and you're unlocking this wealth like who would think but i think there's many other gems in there too but it makes total sense that survivors have a knack and they're really good at cybersecurity, and they're better than everybody else like right. i think there's so many more things we're going to unlock when we aren't afraid to look like mm, we need to see the good. homeless not as the problem but as diamonds when you when you when you when you mine diamonds there's a lot of mess there's a lot of dirt they don't look beautiful you know they're not ready to be put on a ring yeah but you mine them and then you find them and you clean them up and then you cut them and it's like wow right that's the mindset we have to shift they're human beings they are not the problem they're an undervalued asset. That That's right. The mind. That's so right. I just, I put in the chat an, an article that I just wrote for the reporter magazine on, um, on homelessness. And, and it was just really my, my estimation of uh, just, just like the themes, we keep seeing the same themes of, you know, these different ec economists and these different strategists that keep talking about what we need to do to solve homelessness. And it's mm -hmm. only getting worse and it's only getting worse. And you'd hear, oh, we need housing. Oh, we need medical care. Oh, we need mental health services. And, you know, what, I, what it boiled down to in the article is what we need, as you said, Ted, is a heart. You know, a heart that wants to care, a heart that leans into people, a heart that sees people, a heart that, you know, and, and I, I made mention of just us walking by a tent where someone is living and just walking by and eating our little Starbucks croissant and our, and our you know, double latte, you know, soy vanilla, whatever it is. And this person is there and I'm not, I'm not disparaging. I, I enjoy, you know, my coffee. I, I do, I do all the, the things that we all do, but, but I, I will tell you that when I walk by and or drive by tents, I say prayers. I look that way. I think about the people that are in there and I do a little check-in and I go, am I doing enough to serve them in my life? And mm -hmm. am I doing something that is going to bring some kind of piece of that person over there. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I agree. Yeah. And to, you know, allow our children and the next generations to, to be aware and to not be fearful or judge. You don't know, you know, what this person has been through. You don't know what their life has been like that has led them up to oh, this yeah. circumstance. You know, it's really important. I think too, I think there, there was a lot of bad habits that yeah. had formed, you know, through our generation and the people yeah. that were raising us. Yeah. And then I think that there's been a shift of, you know, making them see and be aware and, um, and knowing that we're all have a purpose here. Yeah. And, and totally it's not agree. either or we need these brilliant minds. We need these energy engineers. We need these strategists. I mean, look at all the strategy that you've learned about what works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. We need that. It's both. Oh, yeah. We need it's to both. approach it with both, you know, and yeah. treat the whole problem and the whole, um, I'd appreciate it. We've been talking a lot about homeless and also I'm working with R3 and we develop tiny home communities to specifically address the housing side and others. But maybe you could unpack a little bit more about the connection between human trafficking and homelessness and the housing crisis, which you see it as. Yeah, so, you know, homelessness is at the root. It's funny because we, we try to kind of keep them separate, but they're actually very much integrated. Most of the people that we provide our services to are traffic victims that are homeless. The only difference is they're sleeping in hotel, right? Uh, they're moving from hotel hotels in New York to Arizona to San Francisco, and they're moving all around. Well, they have no home. They have nowhere to live. Uh, that they, you know, an address per se. Um, oftentimes, it, you know, they are, they have moments where they'll sleep in their cars. Maybe they haven't, some things haven't been pulled together or maybe they got robbed. 
Uh, that happens a lot. Maybe their exploiter beat them up. Um, maybe they, they're fleeing from their exploiter or their trafficker if they're being labor trafficked and they find themselves sleeping under bridges and under tents for a couple of days. There's a lot of people that, um, that are in the encampments that are there doing survival sex to, to you know, make it from one day to the next. So trafficking and, and homelessness go, they're very much connected. Unfortunately, they're ugly cousins, if you want, if you want to put it that way. And um, so for me, I, I see human trafficking as really the, uh, the, the thing that happens to people when they are at their most vulnerable place in life, whether they've been sexually uh, you know, abused, they're living in uh, poverty, they have generational trauma, maybe they have one. I had one young lady that had no trauma in her background, but she had experienced the loss of a, of a child. And that, and somebody came in right at the time when she lost her child and they were able to manipulate her and present themselves as a love interest and then turn that into a trafficking situation. Um, I have people whose parents uh, have, you know, died of car accidents, uh, whose mother died of cancer and they were so stricken, grief stricken that someone came in and said, here, let me be. And oftentimes it's one of those basic, you know, Maslow's, you know, model or pyramid of, of basic needs, right? So it's, it's food, it's love, love is in there. People offering you love. We have no idea how powerful that is when someone offers you love as a way to manipulate you into doing things, compromising your own values, and um, putting yourself in kind of precarious situations. And it, it, you know, and, and if somebody's listening to this and you've gone through that, I just want you to know it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Um, I would have fallen for it. And many people I know would have fallen for those, those kind of lines because if you've come grown up, you know, like me, I was in foster care. I lived with a lot of abuse and poverty and whatnot growing up. And there, that makes you, vulnerable. You want to be loved. You want to be cared for and you can be easily tricked. And you're absolutely right. I mean, it's like, and the, right. The, the, the predators mm -hmm. are just waiting for those moments to just slip right in and you mm -hmm. can't even see it. You you're don't even know. You're like, yeah. you look back and you're going, Oh, like yeah. I've, I can't tell you how many times I've been, and I've been sharing a presentation and I'll talk about trafficking and I'll explain the process and someone will go, oh, I, I, I was trafficked. I was labor trafficked. I was sex trafficked. Have you ever exchanged something that you needed for, for sex, mm -hmm. um, you know, or a sexual favor of any kind? Well, then, you know, by the definition where there's force, fraud, or coercion, mm -hmm. um, where someone, you know, if you were a child, it's automatic, right? right? If you were an adult, if you were coerced, you know, I'm going to get you this job, you know, this really mm -hmm. great job, but right now you only need to do this job for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, and then we will, uh, we'll get you that other job. Right. And this, this job for a little bit involves, you know, you've got to do these massages on these guys. They're going to be nude. You might see this, you might see that. They may mm -hmm. rub on you the kind of, we, they might be a little weird, but we're gonna move you into a management role. It's just gonna take us a few weeks to get it broken up. Mm -hmm. These are the kinds of scenarios. And you just find yourself in these rooms and you're going, well, how did I get here? Sure. Yeah, right. I think it's super important to know that, right, these, survivors are not alone. And again, it clearly happens all the time, all the time. Yeah. And how do we stop it and bring awareness to it? And yeah. 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 So I have a quick question about your, um, your IT Academy. Mm -hmm. Are your girls interested in design? Do, are, are there certain, you know, with CAD or however, oh, architecture? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it's interesting. So they are like the, the girls that are really 
So we, we serve not just survivors of human trafficking, but all kinds of vulnerable populations. So re-entry, you know, the, the, the whole, the whole gamut, but the, the, the ones that come from the trafficking background, they have this um, flair for fashion, for design, for, yeah. you know, the arts. It's just, it, I don't know why it is. It seems like it's kind of goes hand in hand together. Mm -hmm. And so Anytime I can map things from that are in the tech world to the arts or map them back to, like you said, de design or fashion or anything along those lines, they, it clicks for them. It just connects yeah. and they get so excited about it. And um, yeah, it's just like a, a wave that they can ride all the way to where they're headed. So I love that. And Ted, that's maybe, you know, I it would be lovely to work with some of your students or your yeah. graduates or anyone in the program, even with R3 and going to look at these houses and talk about design. And mm. I know that we're furthering these conversations Functions. about even color mm. schemes and whatever oh, along yeah. down the line, which could be really um, a fun way to integrate your program along with uh, what R3 is doing. I know that, that is a great idea. Right. Oh my gosh. Elliot was saying, I mean, you know, he's got the architecture all locked in. He's like, you may not approve of some of the choices I've made and I'm <laughs> sure they're great, but yeah. it would be really fun to just elevate them in a way and get some young, fresh eyes on them and see what ideas they might have as well. Wow. That would be so amazing just that to, would be awesome. And they would feel, again, going back to that heart that wants to give back, that wants to yeah. support others. Oh my gosh, I'd love that. Right? Mm -hmm. I think that that would yeah. be a great, Ted, I mean, I think that would be wonderful to make that connection. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. When I get up there and when I'm doing the tours, maybe, yeah, we can further this conversation with Vanessa and and get some students on one of our field trips and walkthroughs and, you know, maybe have a little powwow after and see what thoughts they might have or what they would do or how they would bring their vision into mm. these small homes to make them oh feel like my home. that would, would be, be so great. amazing yeah mm. I think it would be really fun so yeah I, really fun I, I think what you're describing about education is really the future of education because education is moving away from an academic model to much more hands-on and I think mm -hmm. there's so much potential and I love the opportunity you're bringing it's a win-win, you know, synergistic solutions that you're, you're creating much needed employees yeah. in addition to helping, you know, change the system. You know, you, you, you're, you're intervening and, and it has a ripple effect and you help one mom and right. you help her children and her children to come. Oh. It's, it's so it's wonderful. It's a generational trauma breaking activity all around. It's just of re just really rearranging everything. Um, and, it, it, and, and I don't think it's beyond us. I know we can, I, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it happen. I'm seeing the next generation is already that much better because of what's happening with right now with the, the people that we're serving. And, you know, I think like vision wise, you put, you, you, I think I saw in the chat, you said, what's the vision? I see it's like, we have all of these housing projects where, and, and, they, and they look different. I think what R3 is doing is gonna be incredible. Tiny homes, let's go all over the place. Let's just get a bunch of communities going. Let's, let's uh, lather those communities with wraparound services and barrier removal. So, and it's gonna look different in different places, right? So I loved what Dave was saying, like, I ca caught the tail end where he's like different, like Salinas needs a different kind of thing than mm -hmm. Stockton needs, then, you know, then Oakland needs, then San Francisco needs, but you have these little places where you, you have houses, you have these wraparounds that are relevant to the people in there. And then you say, I'm going to raise the level of everyone here from a a skills-based standpoint. I'm going to get you going on some, and I'm, 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 I'm a little biased here. I, because tech has made its way into every industry. I think tech has to be taught across the board. As a matter of fact, I created a tech entrepreneurship program and it's, it's called tech biz. And I say, my little tagline is you better tech yourself before you wreck yourself. They got to tech themselves. Oh, so good. <laughs> So, we we and, have to be forward thinking and create the, the jobs of the future. 
That's oh right. My gosh, Vanessa, I love that. <laughs> and even if you're <laughs> in hell, yourself before you wreck yourself. That's, that's right. right. That's right. <laughs> because so I mean, you think about it. Even our grandmothers, they have to get to social services, social security. They got to log on and go see their status. Even to vote, to, right? To vote. Like anything. Yes. Anything. So I want them to know what right. they're doing. I, I don't want these phishing scams to be able to take them under and these Facebook cloning scams and these different things that these folks are doing to leverage these technology platforms. I want them to be educated mm -hmm. no matter who they are. So we do that. We layer in. If you want to go into construction, let's layer that in. You want to mm -hmm. go into banking, let's layer that in. Let you know all these different industries, mm -hmm. layer them in. And then this person kind of rises like a phoenix, right? With all these skills and all these support systems around them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the other one that's so important is financial literacy. They got to yeah. know how to manage their pocketbook. They got to know how to do investments, <laughs> taxes. taxes. Yes. Ah. All of it. All of if it. If you get a credit card, this is what happens. If you do this, this is what happens. This is what this means. Yes, yeah. just financial literacy, which they didn't. They don't teach. No. In a normal, like in public school, they never taught that. I always thought that was so wild. Right. That those courses weren't ever taught. I think that's so innovative. I love that. Yeah. So it's well rounded. With tech as the core, right? Right. We need that. It's yes. around. It's not going anywhere. But what yes. are your strengths? Exactly. And then the last thing that I think is so important, this is a, just, a, just the, like the, the, the cherry on top, and it's a big cherry because we have a relationship with an organization called Solgen Solutions. They provide life coaching to all of our IT students. And, you know, I think having somebody who's talking about, you know, not just, you know, how are you going to finish your, your test for this, this tech certification? No, who are you? Mm -hmm. What is your vision for your life? What, who, you know, how can I support your purpose? Mm -hmm. These are the kinds of deeper conversations that Jen Alvarez, who runs that program and, and her team, they, they inspire these students to think of themselves more. You're, you're not what you've been through. You're so much more I, than that. I love that. You're not what you've been through. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I yeah. think you're going to find too that, you know, down the road, many of your, your students are going to become really good life coaches. Yes. Oh all they've my overcome. God. Can you just imagine? Wow. You know, I, I, I like to say when I preach, never diminish the power of survival. You've learned come so on. many skills surviving and we just need to come alongside and, you know, bring restoration and then tweak that and realize, you know, let's create an environment that they go beyond the survival and the victim mentality to realizing right. a new future. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. that's so, so powerful. I always say our students in the IT Academy, they are resilient and brilliant, you know, and they just take it in, live it, be it. And, uh, yeah. So and you Vanessa, deserve it. We, right? Yeah, exactly. You this. Right. Yeah. Why can't, why, why don't you, right. Like, why don't you deserve this? Right. Yeah. What, what keeps yeah. you from having those feelings of accepting this wonderful thing? Yeah. Beautiful. And, you know, looking at some of those things, one of the things that I'm learning as a trauma professional, I've, you know, I've, I've done a lot of studying about these things. And some of the people will say, yeah, but I've been a drug addict for my whole life. And I say, you know, I, and I learned this from um, Dr. Janina Fisher. She said, ask the question, how has being a drug addict helped you to survive? Mm -hmm. Instead of looking at it as a place of condemnation, mm -hmm. how has being exploited helped you to survive? How is being, you know, on the street, how is being, uh, you know, robbing people? How did that help you to survive? It's such a play thing of condemnation, like, oh my gosh, what I did is so horrible. I'm such a bad person. Right. But we, what we really don't understand is a lot of these behaviors, I'm not justifying them, but I'm trying to be trauma informed and empathetic when I think about them so that people don't carry them into their future with such condemnation. They, they think about them as I had to do that 
or mm-hmm. I was involved in that because I didn't see a way out, but now I do. And now yeah. that doesn't have to define where my future goes. So powerful. Yeah. That's- I mean, I, yeah, I have probably 8 million more questions and I just want to <laughs> hang out with you all day. <laughs> Oh, like you're, you, you mentioned you just got trauma uh, certified. Have you finished the certification? I have four more hours and then I'll be done. Yeah, I'm wow. very, I, I would love to just dive in and learn more and more. Oh, you, studying you're going to love it. Myself about that, you know, and, and um, looking into it, it it's, it, it's so much for us to learn. And, and even the science is, is yeah. growing in this area to understand human behavior and the, the role of trauma. Um, Mm -hmm. and how we need to become informed if we want to help people you know absolutely so um i think a good place to end to wrap vanessa yeah um, yeah my wife and i love your organization and we actually support you i know um you know so we're you know we're not we're not yet super wealthy but it (laughs) means so much that just the little bit that we are able to give makes a difference so maybe you can tell how can people support your organization? Do you need volunteers? Do you have projects? I know that just contributing and, you know, for the cost of a few lattes, we're able to make a difference and we love being a part of what you're doing, but how yeah. can people support this incredible work you're doing? Well, I, um, you can certainly this weekend coming up, we have a gala going on and we would love to invite you to attend our gala. And if you want to be a sponsor, it's not too late. Um, and you can uh, join us. It's a virtual gala and it's from five to six thirty PM Pacific time on Sunday, March the 6th. And, um, we have a, a survivor leader who's our keynote speaker, um, Becca Charleston, who's incredible. She's just amazing. She'll be speaking. And then we have some artists, some young men who are part of the West side heralds of harmony. Uh, we have a poet, uh, Venus Jones who will be there. It's going to be a great time. And our theme is journey to freedom in South, uh, South Africa. So Johannesburg, South Africa, and we'd like to, you know, create themes for our events. So um, that's one way is just join us and be a part of our community. And then secondly, if you want to support us financially, you can do so by going to our website, which is loveneverfailsus.com forward slash donate. And um, right now, what we are in really in need of is we have a house for four girls um, for uh, that are ages 13 to 17. Right now, we have two 14-year-olds in our home, and we have another one, 14-year-old coming um, this week. And we are not, this is a foster care diversion program. And so we don't receive foster care funding because it's, it's to prevent foster care. And so we really need funding for our home. We also need funding. We are in the process of opening our first AB 12 home, which is for um, transitional age youth 18 to 21. And that will be a 12 bed Tay home and um, as y'all know, being in foster care, there's a very high recruitment rate from people who are in foster care. And so we want to make sure that foster um, g- children, uh, youth don't end up on the street and end up somewhere where they are cared for and supported and safe. So those are the two areas that we're focusing on fundraising wise. If you want to support us, we'd love your help. Excellent. I know I love this. <laughs> and I'm definitely going to join your uh, your gala on Sunday. Yay! Awesome. So yes. So. Oh, that means so much. Thank you, Tracy. I appreciate yeah, it. I look forward to it. Of course. This has been yeah. such a pleasure. Thank you again for your time. And I cannot wait to meet you in person. Oh, and me to too. More about your students and your graduates and how we can um, work together. And to Absolutely. dream about the future, you know. Yes. Yeah. What <laughs> My dream of California is a, is a state without homelessness, yes. without unemployment, and yes. without exploitation. Yes. And I believe those are accomplishable. I strongly believe it. But you know what? I'm willing to die trying <laughs> rather than just wait for somebody else to have a big dream. So let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, I'm in. <laughs> Let's do it. Join the gala on Sunday. That's the next step. Okay. Yes. All right.
We'll talk Thank soon. Thank you. Okay.